And uh, what we um, would like to understand, so our work is some attempt to understand some part of a recent paper by uh, uh, Okunkov, Aganacic and Okunkov on, uh, on the relation between uh, el el geometric construction of, of representation of uh, uh, elliptic uh, quantum groups uh, uh, using equivariant cohomology. And we consider just the most basic case, which is uh, rank 1, uh, SL2, and, uh, and try to, to work out uh, uh, the construction. So the question uh, we were asking, so in the old days we, we treated this uh, representation theory of elliptic quantum groups. So uh, in one formulation, uh, the, um, the representations are vector fields over uh, the field of meromorphic function of, uh, of the so-called dynamical uh, parameter. And so, um, and so the quantum groups act by difference operators on, on, on functions of these dynamical parameters. And, uh, but it was kind of clear that this action preserves certain spaces of theta functions. And, uh, uh, some, uh, and uh, now with this um, inter geometric interpretation in terms of uh, elliptic homology, we understand better what we can say on which spaces this uh, operators act. So the, the, the big picture which is uh, proposed by um, uh, Maulik and Dokunkov first and then uh, Aganachi Dokunkov really goes back to work of uh, Nakajima. So you consider some Nakajima, Nakajima introduced um, for each quiver, a, a, a quiver variety, so you have x a quiver variety. which is a certain symplectic uh, um, variety with, uh, with a, uh, which is a resolution of, uh, of singularity, uh, of uh, symplectic resolution, and, and this is an affine variety. And, uh, and so uh, the idea is to consider uh, some cohomology theories of these uh, varieties and, and define operators by correspondences. And these correspondences uh, obey some uh, um, commutation relations of interesting uh, algebras. In particular, quantum groups. You can take quiver varieties for um, whose underlying graph is an ADE graph, and you get um, representations of the, the more, most familiar case of, uh, of, of, of uh, affine quantum groups or Youngians and so on. So the picture is that uh, if you, if you take, uh, so there is some torus action on, on these varieties. And if you take uh, the equivariant cohomology is a representation. So for e to each of these objects, you associate a Lie algebra. So if you take an ADE quiver, you get the ADE uh, simple Lie algebras. So this is a representation of, uh, of the Youngian of G. And then if you take the k equivariant k theory, it will be a representation of, uh, of the universal em enveloping of the loop algebra, deformed. And, uh, and then uh, this is less uh, understood, I think, at the moment. But there is uh, also an um, elliptic cohomology, equivariant cohomology. And, and here you should get uh, representations of uh, the elliptic quantum group associated to G. And uh, the way it works is that you have some map to uh, HT of uh, x plus x0 x, which was constructed by Nakajima. And, uh, and so this will act by kind of correspondences on, on those spaces. So this is a big picture. And uh, we are mostly interested in, in this part here, which is, uh, which is due to Aganacic, uh, Okunkov. And here we will uh, consider the simplest case where x is uh, uh, the, the disjoint union of t star of the Grassmannian of k, k from 0 to, to 
to n. And uh, so this is the case for which correspond to g equal to you know, SL2 or GL2, probably. And um, right. So what I would like to, um, so first let me say something about uh, this uh, elliptic quantum group, uh, very few words, and then I will explain some old construction of ours, which the construction of weight functions. So, so Maulik and Okunkov introduced the notion of stable envelope, uh, which is a map from, say, equivalent uh, cohomology of X to the equivalent cohomology um, sorry, for the equivalent cohomology of the fixed point set to, to this, which obeys some kind of triangularity property. And uh, in terms of explicit functions, these are the weight functions which appeared uh, in the old days in the, in the um, solutions of knizhnik zamolochik of equations. So if you consider integral solution of hypergeometric type of... Um, of solution of, of these differential equations or difference equations, then uh, uh, you will see as an integrand this weight function. So this is the relation to, to this story. But I will come back to, to, to that. So, uh, so let me say a few words about elliptic, maybe elliptic R matrices. So, so the, the R matrix is kind of the basic building block for uh, in, the, in the representation of elliptic quantum group, or and at least in the in the GLN case, you can describe everything in terms of R matrices, and uh, and so this is one aspect of representation theory of quantum group, and I will mostly concentrate on on, on this aspect. So. Uh, so uh, these R matrices are the most basic definition. They are solutions of the uh, Young-Baxter equation, which I will write. And so there are uh, such solutions for um, kind of in the rational case. So this would be the rational case, and here the trigonometric case, and here elliptic case. And uh, so here you have the usual uh, Young-Baxter equation, but here you have a sort of dynamical version of the, of the um, Young-Baxter equation. So you have dynamical uh, Young-Baxter equation. <coughs> For R, some matrix R, which depends on spectral parameter and this dynamical parameter, which is in the dual of, uh, of the Carton subalgebra. So this is in N H of V tensor V, maybe invertible. And, uh, and so lambda is uh, in H star, right? <coughs> and H is, a, is, is an abelian Lie algebra. So in our case, uh, H is just uh, one dimensional, but uh, in general, you have this, uh, this thing here. So you have V is, a, is some finite dimensional uh, H modules, with some weight space decomposition. And uh, so, uh, so the, the equation uh, looks like this. You have R, I will explain the notation, 1, 2, uh, Z1 minus Z2 lambda minus, there is parameter h bar, r1, 3. So uh, r2, 3. So you have this uh, little modification of the usual Young-Baxter equation is equal to the other ordering, 2, 3, z2 minus z3, z, yeah, z2 minus z3, z1 minus z3, lambda minus h bar h2, and r2, 3, 1, 2, z1 minus z2 lambda. So uh, if you don't have this lambda dependence, this is just the, 
uh, Young-Baxter equation with spectral parameter uh, used by Baxter in integrable models and uh, Young in, in kind of scattering theory in two dimensions. And uh, now this is uh, this kind of dynamical modification. And uh, so, so this is an equation which, which uh, lives in, uh, in, in end of V tensor V tensor V, H if you like. And um, so for instance, this R12, so these indices uh, say which you, on which uh, space you are acting, maybe 1, 2. So this is the first. Uh, yeah, means that it is uh, R12. So it is R, sorry, lambda minus h bar mu, um, tensor the identity. Uh, when you restrict to, uh, so on, if you take, if you take uh, a weight space mu. So the dependence on, on these third variables depend on the vector you are acting on. If the ve vector has weight mu in the third uh, uh, argument, then, uh, uh, then you, uh, you, you shift by, by, this, by this amount. <coughs> so this is the, this equation. And um, so one definition of the quantum group for SL2 or for SLN is uh, that you, you, you write some quadratic relation of the RTT type, which I will not write. And, uh, and these are the coefficients. And, and, and the, the, the representation, by definition, a representation of a quantum group would be some object obeying those quadratic relations. And this object is a difference uh, operator in the variable lambda. It will involve such shifts. But I will not uh, comment much about that. So this is the, the, the thing. So this has, has, has kind of two roles. One is it's the coefficient in the quadratic relation, which gives one definition of the quantum group. And also, uh, this quantum group has evaluation representations. And uh, there is a co-product. And you can, if, you s if we switch the ordering of the uh, uh, factor in, this in the tensor product of evaluation representations, the two orderings are related by uh, R matrices obeying this, these relations. So um, right. So le now let me say something about these this weight functions that were appeared in, in, in solutions of, uh, of this uh, Knizhnik sum logic of difference equations. And I will give a construction, which one construction of those weight functions, which goes back to an old paper of ours. The question you wrote just above. Is it with H after uh, 2 or after? Um, here it is 2. Uh, maybe there are mistakes. There it is 3, and it is 1. Yeah, but then definition, you so you try to define this using the, this is the, this is the definition or? Uh, yes, this is a definition of this notation. So, but uh, uh, it's analogous in for the other. I didn't define it for the other. Uh, orderings, but you always... Is it kind of four, you are, so the V, what kind of H module you consider? Is it some... It's some sim, sim, so it's a direct sum of weight spaces. So, so V, finite dimensional and... Okay. And, and the notation is this h after 2, why is there the self factor, which is that's the mu? So here there is a 3, right? Here we are acting on the 3, so I fix the weight in the third factor. If you had h2, you would fix the, the in the second factor. So this is a, a, a 20 year old with Tarasov and Varchenko. where we describe those weight functions in terms of shuffle products. So, uh, so maybe unshuffle products. <coughs> so, 
So in that, uh, in that paper, we wanted to construct weight functions associated to, uh, to any kind of evaluation uh, representations, and in particular for evaluation Verma modules. And so for that, you and this also gave a construction of the R matrix for uh, evaluation uh, Verma modules for arbitrary uh, pairs of weights. And uh, the construction is, is, uh, is a functional realization of representations of the elliptic quantum group, if you like. So, so suppose you have two functions, f of t1, tk prime, I guess, and the function g of t of k double prime variables, and you say k equal to k prime plus k double prime. And then you also have parameters. And I will define a product of those functions, but it will depend on parameters. Parameters, they will have z1 up to zn prime associated to the first function, if you like, and then z prime plus 1 up to zn associated to the second function, in some sense. And then you define a shuffle product, and there is also h bar. And uh, you define f star g. Ah, and these are symmetric functions. Symmetric holomorphic functions in all variables. Symmetric under permutations. And this will be a function of k variables. You, uh, you, I don't know, you, sh you take some of a shuffle or you can symmetrize over this variable t1 up to tn, you take some of all permutations of the product of t1 tk prime g of tk prime plus 1 up to tk times some uh, function phi, which I will define, which depends on, on, on the z variables and the parameter t1 tk, I guess. So this is a so-called shuffle product. And this function uh, has a definite form. It's uh, phi z h bar t is a product of theta. So theta would be, there are three versions, elliptic, trigonometric, and, and rational. So uh, in the elliptic case, which is the most general, it is uh, the odd Jacobi theta function. TL, and then there is a product of theta TL minus ZA plus H bar, and the product of theta TL T, uh, J minus ZB. And I should say something about the indices. So here you sum, J will be smaller, is a, is the first variable, K prime, and L is bigger than K prime. Same here. So here L is bigger than K prime. A is smaller than N prime. So it's the first N by one. I really want to split into two groups of variables. And here, uh, and here J is smaller, uh, K prime, and B is larger than N prime. So OK, some formula like this. And uh, so theta is uh, the first Jacobi theta function, the odd Jacobi fun theta function. And uh, so it degenerates to, to I don't know, sine t or, or, or t. So this would be the trigonometric and rational case. So this depends on two. So we fix an elliptic curve, right, so, uh, which we really write as z plus tau z. So this is fixed, and we have these functions here. And then now, this has two periods, 1 and tau. If you let tau go to infinity, you get the, the trigonometric limit. And if you let 1 to infinity, you get uh, the rational limit. OK, so now can I use the third board?
So what are the properties of this function? So, so the idea now is um, that, uh, OK, f there are some elementary properties that first uh, that if f and g are holomorphic, then also f star g. It is uh, slightly, so this function has a, has a 0 on the lattice. So there, are, there is some denominator, but this will be cancelled out because, because you, you symmetrize, right? Symmetrizing will cancel those denominators. So you really get uh, uh, holomorphic functions. And then uh, you have associativity uh, whenever this is defined. So now you have three sets of variables, and, and <coughs> the obvious way it will be associative. And, uh, and then the some kind of more uh, subtle property is that this uh, preserves uh, theta functions, which I with vanishing condition. I will define these notions. So the functions f and g here, they also depend on the z? Uh, at the moment, I fix z. But later, we, we will want to, to consider this also for variable z. But at the moment, it is fixed. There are parameters. But we will we'll vary z, yes. So I, I will explain what it is, but let me first say some words about what it is in the limit, in this, uh, in this limit. Uh, so in the, in the rational limit, uh, you can replace here functions by, by polynomials. And so this will map polynomials to polynomials. In the trigonometric limit, you can take trigonometric polynomials. And again, it will. And in both cases, there, there is some sort of vanishing or wheel condition which is preserved by by this product, and uh, we'll define it. And in the uh, elliptic case, you need theta functions. But these theta functions require an additional parameter, which is this dynamical parameter. This is where it enters here. So, so, uh, so let me. Theta functions, you just mean rational functions on the, on the corresponding elliptic curve? Or, I mean, wh what is the space of all theta functions for you? I will define it now, yes. Okay. I, I, will, I will define what, what I, w I mean by theta function. So, it's just, uh, so let's, let's define it. So uh, I want to define a space theta kn, which depends on, on the variable z, z1 up to zn, and uh, h bar, and also this uh, dynamical parameter lambda. So this will be uh, functions, uh, functions f, ft1 up to tk, which are entire functions, holomorphic, and symmetric under permutations, and such that, uh, um, so theta, f uh, yes, so let me say what theta function means first, such that g, so there is some, uh, uh, maybe the better way is to write f divided by product of theta of ti minus za over all i and a, a up to k. And uh, this is a rational function now, uh, obeys some periodicity property. So g of ti plus 1 is, is, is g. And uh, g of ti plus tau is the exponential of 2 pi i. Um, lambda is a parameter which defines uh, the k times h bar. So it's a section of some theta bundle, and uh, th there is a parameter lambda appearing there. Where is tau? No, so but in the, this is its formula. Elliptic curve is here. No, no, but I, I mean tau it doesn't appear in the formula. No. Yes, it does in the theta. Ah, I should write theta. I should write theta, yes, maybe something like this. So we fix the elliptic curve. I will not. Uh, no, but uh, in the second relation, 
as I read an exponential, but I don't see who, if this exponential contains data. Tau, tau. It shows yes. tau. It is uh, contained here, if you like. And also, if you now if you rewrite the transformation property for f, then you will have some more complicated multiplier, which includes uh, some theta type multiplier. Also, this depends on tau, right? Right. And but the third condition is uh, is that uh, f. So maybe, so maybe this is uh, the first condition, or maybe this is the first. F is independent. I fix tau, so I, go I look at all <coughs> the entire function of t1 up to tk with this property, and the property depends on, on the parameter, like z and, and tau and h bar. Uh, right. And, and then the, the, the vanishing condition, so it's not finished yet, so vanishing condition, is that uh, f of t1 tk minus 2 z a z a minus h bar is equal to 0. So this is for all a from 1 to n. And uh, so, this, uh, so this condition is empty if, uh, by definition, if, uh, if k is, is less than 2. You need at least two variables. So this is the um, the space, and and the claim is that if f and g are uh, are theta functions, uh, but maybe I should write uh, better this uh, this condition. But roughly speaking, is that uh, um, this uh, star product will preserve the property of being a theta functions. But I have to say something about lambda because again, this kind of dynamical shifts will occur. And um, OK, so this I give the definition. So now let us define, uh, the, take the direct sum of those spaces. So I consider spaces with different number of variables, theta kn <coughs> for k from 0 to n, uh, and with the same arguments, which I don't write. Um, so this is an, as an H module with uh, theta kn of weight. So this is, is C, right? And it, in this case, it is weight uh, uh, <coughs> minus n <coughs> plus 2k. So you, you want to be right. Uh, right, so now it's in, in each module. Now the, the statement is that um, the proposition, uh, so star is a well-defined um, map of each module from uh, theta and prime, the first group of variables, if you like, of z1, z and prime, h bar lambda. So I should write tau, but uh, ah, and here uh, minus h bar h2 tensor theta and double prime, which is capital N minus N prime. Theta n of z1 up to zn. So again, uh, the, the, no, the meaning of this notation is that you write this as a sum of weight spaces, and uh, on, on each weight space you have a different shift by, by the character of, of h. Right, so, so this means it preserves the theta function property. And it also preserves the, the vanishing condition. So, uh, so, 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 in, in, uh, so I, I will explain this a little bit. But uh, so in the, in the generic case, z1 up to zn generic, this will be a functional realization of, uh, of, of a, t a tensor product of evaluation representation for, 
for SL2. And uh, if you omit the vanishing condition, you, you will get uh, something which is isomorphic to the tensor product, in the generic case, tensor product of Verma, Verma module, evaluation modules. And the vanishing, or maybe dual Verma modules. And the vanishing condition will, s will take <coughs> the, the irreducible uh, subspace of the dual Verma module. So with a vanishing condition, it will be the tensor product of, in this case, two-dimensional representations. Then there are variants if you want to have higher dimensional <coughs> representations where you have vanishing con or different vanishing conditions, but... Uh, Is the vanishing condition uh, the same in the rational case? Yeah, I yes, I think so, yes. Certainly the trigonometric case. But uh, this, it, it looks more as an algebra structure than the module structure. <coughs> yeah, I will comment on that. I will comment on that. At the moment, it's just a map of H modules. Right. And is it generated in degree one? So that's the product of all the theta one. Yes, yes, this is the next uh, thing. So in the generic case, it is, uh, it is generated by... Giovanni, just to, to follow, will it be later a product of the variance elliptic cohomology? Yes, so, so, uh, so this will be the stable map. Okay. The stable map. So this will be, roughly speaking, this will be elliptic cohomology, and uh, for these Grassmannians, <coughs> cotangent bundle of Grassmannians, <coughs> And this will be the elliptic homology of, uh, of uh, a fixed point set for a subgroup where you take, I don't know, t, t, some subgroup of uh, diagonal matrices of this form. It will split into two parts and this will be the stable envelope. But maybe. Sorry? The stable is not commutative. It's not commutative, no. And this is where we, the R matrices will appear. down something. So let me just give the example to see this, uh, this degree one, which will kind of generate everything. So for n equal to one, you have that uh, theta zero. So we have two weight spaces. This is uh, weight minus one. You have, uh, this is uh, a C times a function one, maybe by definition. And Theta one one here you have just one function which is theta of uh, t minus z plus lambda something like this t minus z plus lambda you have just one variable and uh, and the higher uh, j uh, one are zero for j bigger than one because you cannot satisfy the uh, the, the vanishing condition. So if you don't have the vanishing condition, then you have uh, infinite dimensional space and it's kind of dual verba module. So, and then uh, the <coughs> R matrix, the fundamental R matrix for, for the quantum group is obtained by, uh, by taking uh, theta one Z1, H bar, lambda minus H bar, H2. So you, go, you can go into, you can do this construction in two ways. It's 
So here it is symmetric under Z1 and Z2. But you can also uh, do the other ordering. Theta uh, 1 of Z1 H bar lambda. So and, uh, and the R matrix is basically this, uh, this condition here. So this is will be the R matrix times the permutation of factors. And so I forget to say that, uh, that it, is an, uh, it is an isomorphism. Maybe I should write it here. So it's part of the proposition. It is an isomorphism. for generic parameters. So you can really invert uh, one of this map and get an R matrix, which will be a rational or a meromorphic function. So, so, so we join using the so stable envelope is the multiplication and R matrix is a combination of the two, right? Yes, yes. So if you like, uh, there are, uh, so Maulico Kunfok de define a uh, uh, stable envelope for various uh, chambers, and, uh, and these are kind of two different chambers. The relation between the two is given by the R matrix. Okay, so now, um, of course, now since uh, you have a, an isomorphism, you can iterate this and construct a basis of the space of theta functions with vanishing condition uh, by taking, so we have a basis uh, labeled basis of theta n z1 zn h bar lambda labeled maybe we'll do it in each weight space kn labeled by subset of 1n with k elements, namely uh, you, you write uh, omega. So first of all, you uh, write, you, you say this is c omega 0, this is c omega 1. And, uh, and so you can now take the products of, uh, so these are the weight function omega i, which is omega 1 omega i1, omega in. And so i alpha is in i if, sorry? I, I k was <coughs> Should be i k. Should k of them. I think there are n of them, yes. So you have n. Uh, uh, how many do you take in the product? Right, it is, uh, so it is, uh, it is, you have ah, the number, yeah. it appears there, yes. So alpha in, so. So, sorry, I alpha is equal to one whenever alpha is in I. So these are uh, zero, one, zero, one, one, one. So these are labeled by subsets of, of I. You have k variables if, uh, yes. Right, so, uh, so this is a story. So, um, and so one, one uh, uh, property of this basis is a sort of triangularity, right? Because, uh, you know, <coughs> you have those factors which are not visible now, but you have these factors, yeah. You have this kind of factors here which vanish if you, if you have t equal to z. So it means that you have a, a, tra a, tr a kind of triangularity property that, um, that omega i, so these are functions now of, of, of all sets of variables. Z. Now you can think of z as variables also. Uh, if you have that ti, right. So now you can specialize, right? So you, you can, uh, so now you can set t equal to some values of, of, of z. So you have k here and, and n variables here. 
So you have omega, so this is omega i are functions of all these variables. And uh, uh, if you take zj, for j another subset, namely you set uh, the variable t1 to be equal to the first uh, index of, of j and so on. So is equal to 0 if, uh, if j is, is, if i is smaller than j. So you have sort of triangularity property, which will play a role later, and I'm not uh, uh, describing. And also you have some uh, normalized, so these are the weight functions. And the normalized weight function. Are, uh, you take uh, Wi is equal to omega i divided by, well, this, this is some function I don't want to discuss. Forget about this. Um, product of theta of Tj minus Tl plus h bar sum of all j dif different from L. So forget about this. This is some function only depending on lambda and h bar. And so now here you had a holomorphic function. You divide by, by something which has zeros. However, so this normalized weight function has the property that it is holomorphic as a function of z if you do this kind of restrictions. If you, if you substitute for t some variable z, it will be well defined due to the vanishing condition, in fact. Uh, so this is this basis here. With omega 0 is a function 1, omega 1 is the basis for the one-dimensional space. OK, so this is, uh, uh, these, are these weight functions. And uh, so some slight generalization of it works for other representations. And in this way, using this trick here, you can construct R matrices for other representations. Another application of those weight functions was, uh, so there is some sort of dual dual weight functions, <coughs> which are given by similar construction. And those are coefficients uh, in the eig eigen <coughs> of eigenvectors for the so-called gelf and Zetlin algebra. So in the quantum group, you have some subalgebra, commutative subalgebra. And you might want to diag diagonalize. It's given by the determinant and maybe the first matrix element of the L matrix defining the quantum group. You want to diagonalize them, and, and using weight function, you can construct uh, such such set of common eigenvectors. OK, but now let's me, let me uh, say something about uh, elliptic cohomology. equivalent <coughs> so so in, in one formulation so you have now a, 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 G, a, a G a compact group and uh, in our case, it will be un, uh, e an elliptic curve. Which will fix, in this case, it will be <coughs> given by this. And, uh, and now there is a, a functor. So that I, don't, I don't know if you will accept this notation, which contains the same letter in the <laughs> finite uh, G C W complexes to uh, you know, super C 
schemes. So, uh, so this is the analog of equivariant comology and equivariant case theory. But, uh, but in the ca elliptic case, it is better not to talk about uh, algebras of functions, but because they are non, and but the space on which they are defined. So this is really the analog, not of, uh, of HT, not of HT, but on spec of HT. HT is a ring, so you can take its spec and, uh, and it's a scheme. And so, and so even if it's possibly not affine <coughs> in this. Uh, this is not affine, yes, absolutely. That's the reason you, you it's better to look at schemes than that. And uh, so this is, uh, I don't know, we, w our source is, uh, is a paper in 90 of 95 of uh, Ginsburg, uh, Kapranov, Vassro who defined it axiomatically. They didn't define it, but, uh, but they, 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 they wrote a set of axioms that uh, this, uh, this, theory, uh, this theory should obey. So the uh, first set of axiom, axiom is that it is an extraordinary cohomology theory. And, uh, and then you have to say what is a cohomology of a point, and, and also there are some axioms relating to the uh, functoriality as a function of G. And, um, and so there is a construction uh, also due to, uh, uh, to um, Groinowski. And um, uh, at least for torus action and, and, and also for uh, simple connected groups. Uh, right, so, uh, and so using these axioms or the construction of Groinowski, you can, for instance, consider uh, Grassmannians and, and find what, what it is. So this is our point of view. Um, right, so, 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 so now, uh, right, the elliptic, uh, sorry, the equivalent cohomology is, uh, is a module over the equivalent cohomology of a point. And so the uh, analog here is that this scheme is a scheme over uh, Eg e of a point. So, so Eg of x is a scheme. Maybe I should speed up over uh, Eg of a point, which is uh, has an interpretation in terms of kind of uh, moduli space of bundles. But let me write what it is in the cases we like. E of un is just the elliptic curve to the end, so it's not affine. And uh, E for the tor, ah, sorry, this is divided by Sn, which we denote by E n, and you should, of a point, yes. If you take a torus, we'll get uh, E n. That's right. Here it was. It enters right. And uh, um, now maybe I shouldn't. Right. So so there are two descriptions. So le now let's take x to be uh, the uh, to be the cotangent space. But now we take gr the Grassmannian of k plane in n dimensions. And there is a there are two descriptions. One which is uh, in the paper of Ginsburg, Caprano, Vasco. Um, and, uh, and the group, so here we take the, the group is called A, is uh, u and to the, to the k, and you divide by Sn if, sorry, n. So this corresponds in, in, uh, in, the ter in terms of uh, quiver varieties just to have. A is G, yes. It's called A. Because G will be UN, so t this will be the, the torus. Uh, and there will be a different torus, uh, which is called T. But So I'm I following really uh, Maulikov and Kof here. So is the quiver variety really corresponding to this quiver? Or maybe if you have a, a framing, uh, this quiver here. 
and uh, so here you have k and and n. Right. So uh, so one way to describe the cohomology of the Grassmannian is to use the fact that actually the cohomology is generated by uh, churn classes of uh, of tautological <coughs> bundles. So this is uh, one way, which is already in that paper. And so uh, so I think you have E A of okay. And first of all, you have the structure map to the point, which is E N. And then here you have the the characteristic uh, function, right? So this is so Ginsburg Caprano Basro defini def define a characteristic map which generalizes uh, <coughs> chunk classes. So you have U K. So this is a nice way to to describe it. So this is really uh, symmetric power of and um, so it's a pullback diagram, so it's, it's a fiber product of these two objects, and here you have UN and you end the symmetrization map of N. And so this is uh, the description, and uh, so it's a fiber product. So this is a, it's a fiber product of this times this. And this is a, uh, right, there is some, <coughs> this is a churn classes, if you like, of the, uh, of, of the tautological bundle k-dimensional, and then you can also take the quotient of the whole space by the total, you get another tautological bundle, it's on classes here, and this describes how, how they fit together. So this is one description, and, uh, and, and then the second description is by fixed points, by localization. to get to the point. So you can... Uh, so now you have... Uh, so, so A has fixed point. I mean, the action of A on, on, on this Grassmannian. Labeled again by subsets of 1N. A is the torus. Yes. A is UN. U1 to the N. It's a, it's a carton torus of the uh, UN action, Grassmannian. Uh, K. Uh, and uh, I, so you consider just uh, subspaces of dimension k, which are parallel to the coordinate uh, axis with index in i. These are fixed point for the for the action, and uh, and so you have uh, so you have the fixed points, which is a bunch of uh, uh, a disjoint union of e n, one for each fixed point, and uh, so you have a map uh, from, from these two uh, to the equivalent cohomology of, of GR. Do you remember that the restriction is, is injective, so you know, passing to scheme you have a surjective map here. And, uh, and there's also a description of, of, of uh, of how to you have some co-equalizer diagram. You have some description of how how the kernel, if you like, is. So for each pair of uh, of such eyes, so that um, the intersection is minus one, is k minus one. So they differ just in one point. You have some diagonal that you can embed here. So you have just uh, it's a so you, you 
looks like this, right? So you have so this is an, an EN, and this is another EN of this collection, and they are glued along diagonals xi equal to xj. And the indexes i and j are the one for which this uh, where they differ. So there's some kind of bunch of, of glued things like that. I think this is an accurate picture for gr one two. Okay, so uh, right. So now uh, in, in this Nakajima uh, variety, you don't consider the, the Grassmannian, but you consider T star of the Grassmannian, which is, of course, homotopy equivalent of the Grassmannian. But, but you want a torus now. This is why I, so you will take a, T to be A cross U1, a slightly bigger torus, which now has the right name T. And, um, and this is act so this scales the fibers of the cotangent bundle. And uh, so, uh, right. And then there is a, 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 a more, a second modification, what you really consider. So ET of T star KN is just uh, ET of KN times this additional factor which comes from, from this, uh, this group here. And then you define some extended version, which includes this dynamical parameter, which does have a geometric interpretation in, uh, in uh, aganachi Gopunkov, but um, it's called Keller parameter in that language. So you add another factor of E or the rank of the, so here you have the dynamical. It's in this, ke uh, in this uh, language it's called Keller parameter. So, right, so this is the picture one has. And, um, right, I'm, sh I'm almost over. So uh, what, what happens is that uh, wh this weight function wi uh, and h bar lambda, they are, uh, so they are, cons they are to be uh, sections of a line bundle of the form tk n times Li on the, the space in which the equivariant elliptic homology is embedded. Namely, or maybe, uh, yeah, maybe the best description is, is this one. You have E, um, so you, uh, you have some bundle on this space here. So here you have the variables t. It's a symmetric function on t, so it is, uh, it is defined here. And here you will have, what do we have? You have the, the equivariant variables z1 up to zn for the action of the group A. And then you have h bar, which is equivalent parameter for this action here. And then you have this uh, uh, additional parameter lambda. So it's some sort of theta bundle. But what is important is that it is some kind of fixed bundle times something which depends on i, sorry. <coughs> and, and this comes from the projection onto, onto the base, which is, the, so it comes from the base, so, so the, this, and, right, so, so maybe, no, maybe it is better to define it in this way, sorry. You have C star, so you have a, a a map, this characteristic map, maybe it is called C, from the equivariant cohomology of T star of gr kn. So again, so here you have two maps from the equivariant cohomology. You have the, uh, the map to the structure map to the cohomology of a point, and you also have the characteristic class of the um, tautological bundle. 
you take the product and, uh, and you pull back. And so here you have a, se a section uh, here. This function here is a some section of some theta, theta bundle here. You pull it back, you get something which has this form here, Tkn times p star, uh, uh, something which comes from the base, from, from here. And so this is, so now line bundles of the form Tkn, so this is some kind of fixed, expli explicitly described uh, bundle times pt star <coughs> L are called admissible. So we have a fixed bundle and something which comes from the base. And so now I don't have time to be more detailed, but the claim is that these R matrices and the action of the quantum group uh, map sections of admissible bundles to sections of admissible bundles. So this is the, the, w the way we can, we can use this. And, um, and right. And this, this, uh, the stable envelope can also be understood as a, as a map. So, so maybe I should stop here. So the stable envelope can also be understood in, in terms of this uh, uh, weight function. So you have the stable envelope from the cohomology, elliptic cohomology of uh, T star. Um, sorry, from the elliptic cohomology of the fixed point set, which is uh, some vector space which has the same dimension of C2 to the end, the tensor product of evaluation representations, to the elliptic cohomology of uh, T star gra, and, um, and, and you have to understand uh, elliptic homology classes in this sense as sections of certain admissible bundles. So you have a map from admiss sections of admissible bundles to sections of admissible bundles. So the moral of the story is that you have some class of line bundles on the elliptic homology which are some kind of fixed distinguished bundle times pullbacks from the base and, uh, and everything can be formulated in terms of these bundles. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Yes. The, the definition of Aganashik and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Okunkov is, uh, is uh, axiomatic, so they define the yes. Hermat. It's possible to check that, uh, that the stable envelope that you define satisfies their axioms? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, this comes from this, uh, basically you have this triangularity axiom. And, uh, and this comes from this shuffle product, because in the shuffle product you have certain factors which vanish if t. So, so the, uh, the axioms are in terms of restriction of w to those fixed point components. And this corresponds to substituting t equal to some values of z. And for that, there is some triangularity property, which is, uh, which is this uh, axiom. So we, we didn't quite make the connection, but, but at least the type, we also give a, an axiomatic definition, which is, I'm sure, it's equivalent to what they write. But, um, but we can check it by, by this triangularity property of weight functions. <coughs> I have a philosophical question. Uh, what is possible to use to, instead of with stuff uh, uh, a matrix belonging to Dirnfeld Belavin, so which is not uh, dynamical? Right. Yeah, this is an open question. I think one should be able to to construct uh, also for the Baxter uh, solution, but uh, I don't know how to do it. So can you say in what generality you can do it now? Uh, so uh, yeah, so this we did uh, with, uh, uh, with Rimani and Varchenko for, for SL2, and now uh, Tarasov, Rimani, and Varchenko have a new paper where they do it for SLN. So that's the present situation. So you can't do, you can't do the Jordan Coil, for instance, in the case of the Hilbert scheme. Uh, possibly, yes. So I mean, implicitly in... in, uh, in um, Aganacic Okunkov, in principle, it, it's for any quiver, right? At least the abstract construction. Here we have an explicit. Yeah, no, I don't think about this. That's a question. Uh, that you should ask Andrei. <laughs> but I think so, yes. I mean, the. the 
In principle, it's for any quiver, I mean, what they write. I didn't read the whole paper, it is uh, very long, but... Uh, I have a question. So, uh, you can also, instead of Grossmannian, you can also consider K copies, K, uh, the product of K copies of the projected space of the dimension N, and you, you can also have a stable envelope in this way. So, how can you relate this stable envelope envelope to that of the Grassmannian KN. I mean, uh, this is the abelianization of a stable envelope. Can you do it with uh, weight functions? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I know what you're referring to. So you're saying that for product of yeah, so projective uh, spaces? Um, so if you, uh, in the construction of the quiver variety, you cushion out by the GLK. Yes. Uh, so if you instead you consider the maximal torus in this GLK, and you, you use this quotient, you get uh, k the product of k copies of uh, projected space of dimension n, and you can also have a uh, this stable envelope on I each see. copies of this projected space, and you can also have a stable envelope on that. So, how is this related to the Yeah, the I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not familiar to that construction, but okay. so maybe it co corresponds to having non-symmetric wa yeah. weight yeah. functions. Yes, not yes. symmetric under permutation of T1, T, TK. Okay. I, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? If you take not the cotangent bundle, but just the Grassmannian itself, you don't have harmonic <coughs> Uh, you don't have H bar. All right. Uh, so, s somehow you would like to to introduce H bar in some way, right? I mean, or, uh, but I don't. I don't know. I think Gorbunov had some construction where he only considers Grassmannian, but I forgot. It corresponds to some uh, strange analysis. Yes. In yes. some sense, uh, H bar goes to zero. Right, uh, right. But it is not exactly this case. Okay, so thanks. Thank you. Thank you.